What is going on, homie home slices? We are in Florida, and I got kind of a cool video for you because I'm crazy like OCD about my tackle and stuff, and I think a lot of you guys are too. And the biggest thing is we, we all have a ton of tackle, at least I know I do, and I think a lot of you guys when I read your comments on that, we have a ton of stuff. And one of the biggest things is how you organize stuff, right? So it makes sense in your head. So like, say like today, it's cloudy, right? There's a slight breeze and it's like, you know what? I should probably pull out a spinner bait and a chatter bait and maybe like a crank bait or like a trap or something and, and throw some of those moving baits because these fish are gonna be moving around, dude. I don't gotta like go straight to the heavy cover, go, you know, flip grass and stuff like that. These fish are gonna be a little, in that little more open water. What baits do I have for these depth levels, you know? And, and I can easily add access that I know exactly what I got and then there'll be like a wild card you know I got glide baits too maybe if they're on the edges I can bust out one of my big glide baits and try to catch a big one on that so having your stuff organized so you know exactly where to look for exactly what you want for the conditions that are presented to you is hugely important so we're gonna go through my boat I'm gonna show you how I got it organized before we get started hit that like and subscribe button if you don't do it for me do it for this guy bug do you identify as a beagle or a unicorn beagle or a unicorn so let's get to it. I got my main storage locker on my Z20 right here, and this is really where I keep the majority of my stuffs. So you can see, this might actually look a little messy. I think it's pretty well organized, and, and I'm gonna show you why. So the first thing that I have is down my middle, these are all soft plastics. Like this is all a gambler flipping box. This is Mark all Ned drop shot. Um, these are little like Walmart boxes that I get. Um, these ones are actually, you can buy in a pack and it's like six of them for like 12 bucks or something. They're kind of cheap and junky, but they're the perfect size to source off plastics. And they fit in this, I basically have a tray in my Z20 right here and they fit perfectly right in that tray. And I can even sneak one up there. Um, I can actually get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I can get seven of those boxes in there. That's how I store my soft plastics. I got everything from craws, creatures, jig trailers. Uh, what else do we got down here? Swimming worms, trick worms, stuff like that. What's this one? I got a whole bag of stick baits. I throw a lot of those when it comes to soft plastics. You can tell I'm a, you can tell I'm a Florida kind of guy because I got way too many soft plastics. Chatterbait trailers, little easies, flukes, kind of like your jerk baits and trailers and stuff like that. So that's how I keep my soft plastics organized. Then since we revealed this, you can see I have this side tray right here. This is composed of, I got some bass mafia boxes like these, and then I got some monster bass, just standard kind of um, terminal tackle boxes. So you can see I have worm hooks, flashy swimmers, and screw hooks. So this is all my offset shank hooks, um, my like big swim bait hooks, you know, like screw in swim bait hooks. Uh, of course, I have finesse swim bait heads. So this is kind of like ball heads and all the stuff I would use for like finesse swim bait fishing, spotted bass, things along those lines. I also have like vertical jig. These are those Berkeley kind of like jerking deals. They're almost like the, the ice fishing jig. Um, so I actually have, you know, my finesse stuff separated from my standard swim bait heads. So these are my standard swim bait heads and I actually got them in my nice Bass Mafia box. These boxes are sweet. They're a little pricey, but they are awesome because they keep things super dry and clean. So these are my more standard swim bait heads. You know, these guys, standard hook for A rigs and that. And then I got my more ledge or deep offshore oriented things. Um, and then I always like having a little bit of space in there so I can add stuff because I'm always buying tackle. Uh, of course, neds and blades so what this is is my large array of um neds you know nickels gambler and then i also have a ton of blades mixed in here um so this is where i have those blades where if i modify a swim bait with that screw lock if i'm playing around with a stick bait you know to do that that modified stick bait deal um i got some things to modify some of those finesse presentations uh going forward we got a whole box of hair jigs ryan salzman i have like six of your hair jigs in there and then right here is a giant box of spoons uh, we got our meg uh nickel spoons i think i got some Domiki vaults in here some blade baits um and then i also have my um my treble hooks to change out any of these or my crank baits or my top water whatever needs a treble um but you can kind of tell too i think sometimes how you store things indicates how you like to fish and this is definitely like suited to the style i like to fish and then i got this little box which is actually perfect because it has my blades 
blade baits and underspins. So these are all like little finesse things. So I got underspins. Um, I got my ice fishing little kind of like jerk bait kind of deals. Um, this is a crazy custom one I'll show you. This is a little underspin my buddy makes. Oh, my buddy Paco, he freaking, he, he custom pours it and ties them, little round rubber, it's a smally killer. But you know, you got underspins, um, got a little crazy one too. Basically finesse stuff, got that Scottsboro one in there, but it's a small box because the baits are small and it doesn't take up a whole bunch of space. You're gonna notice too, right off the bat, I got a lot of bags. I love bags to store stuff. Um, these are the Bass Mafia bags, they're super durable. Uh, they also have like a crazy, um, crazy like ziploc deal to them but i found for swim baits so swim baits have kind of crap packaging it's really good for the swim baits but it's really bad for like storage because they're in these these clam shells and things along those lines so these are kai -Tex. i have it organized in kind of a funky way so these are 3.3 like to 4 inch full body swim baits i got my more micro stuff these are 2.8 full body sw swim baits so you know your smaller kind of deal so i got another bag right here these are my medium swim baits and it, obviously the indicator is hollow bodies and then i got one more right here and these are my big ones this is what i like to use in florida got you know anything from um i don't know like giant hollow bodies in here i think i got some mega bass stuff in here i got that new um bass mafia what is it that the zell dangerous swim bag i got like magnum stuff for catching mags um i have this guy so this is um an old school bass mafia tackle coffin what's really sweet about this is other than that falling out um it allows me to keep all this tungsten probably one of the more expensive things that i have a lot of uh, my flipping hooks and all that stuff kind of in an organized manner and in closed up and locked in i also have some swivels in here some punch skirts so this is kind of a punching box but it also includes any kind of like worm weight and things along those lines so i have everything i need to like rig up like a texas rig or, or anything like that right in this this front section or just your basic soft plastic rigs and then i also have a cache of all my bulk line so you guys know how much i love that red label um like i got a 15 a 12 a 20 this is my backup leader line some line and then these right here are all my um my finesse kind of uh, braids so i got that dial in there that's that cast stuff the um i I think it's like 50 and then i got a 14 pound test if any of you guys ever come fishing with me you're gonna know exactly where to grab stuff so in my rod locker uh this is the one on the the driver's side it looks kind of like a mess but here's the deal the way i have things packaged it is not a mess so this right here is um it's a bass mafia bag and i have all of my um my chatter baits um, in here so I have everything organized and then I have some unpackaged stuff that's a little chatterbait mini um, the new slobber knocker need to try this thing out waiting to go to stick marsh in the headwaters to try it out but I have these organized I got some little stickers so I can identify the weights because frankly after you take them out of the package and put them in I can never remember like what was which and then I try to compare different brands to figure out what weighs what and I can't figure it out so three A's half half and then you know I've got like a back page where I can I can throw in some extra heavy ones ones fill them in however i need to but it's nice because this keeps stuff from getting rusty it's super um kind of pliable so i can kind of throw it in here and it gets smashed around but it actually protects the baits and um, it keeps them all dry too because dry rot's a big deal with um all that chatter bait stuff uh same deal with the spinner baits i got the old blade coffin uh so this is all of my spinner baits right here um i got them all identified with various weights and that and then i have stuff in new packaging ready to go but it's super simple i can either grab the bag for the chatterbaits or the box for the blades uh, little utility box swim baits and glide baits all organized ready to go these are a little hard to store because they're so big and i don't have a bunch of fancy stuff what else do we got here oh so another walmart box um this is where i keep line um extra line so this is anything from like mono for like backing when i get a new reel or need to replace the backing i got my heavier braid in here for flipping setups just a wide range of kind of basic line for i don't know random situations as well as braided stuff what else do we got oh the buzz bait box so i got a bunch of buzz baits you can you see it's all kind of thrown in here but every box is sort of identifiable i'm proud of this i, I keep my crankbaits you guys know how much i love to fish deep crankbaits so i keep these pretty organized so these are those monster backs 3700 deep utility boxes so 6 xds 15 to 20 feet know exactly what's in there 10 xds 20 foot plus know exactly what's in there 8 xds 20 foot plus know exactly what's in there what else do we got down here oh we got a frog box 
Um, I like keeping the frogs in a box because it keeps them dry, it keeps them from rotting, and I'm able to keep them separated pretty well. Uh, random items, and then we'll get to the bags. That's actually a tow strap. I use that to tow somebody in off the lake. Um, actually, when I first got the boat, somebody was broke down, and I'm like, time to do a good deed, right? So I always have a tow strap, and I always have a pair of flip-flops because the worst thing ever is wet feet. I might be a, a ninny for that, but I hate freaking wet feet. Dude, when your socks get wet, I'd rather have bare cold feet than wet feet in sopping wet shoes. It drives me absolutely nuts. Uh, you guys like this video quite a bit. This is um, my skirt making kits. So this has everything I need to custom make a jig out on the water, you know, ready to go. And once again, it's nice to have all this stuff in a bag because it's, it's super protected. It can rain a whole bunch. Everything can get soaking wet because the reality is it happens. And, and my stuff is dry and protected because water is, it, we love the water. The water is the worst thing for just about everything that we have. Um, then what else do we got down here? This is my sneakster bag. So this has uh, Baca burritos in it, uh, some big swim baits, my custom Bradley, or not Bradley Hallman, but my Hallman swim bait, the one that's super duper pretty. Um, we have a Gambler dry bag right here. This is my rain gear, all packed up just in case, and obviously in a dry bag, so I don't have to worry about it moldy and getting all smelly and stuff. Um, a rigs and swim baits. And here's what I really like about the bag stuff. So I'm down in Florida, like I mentioned. There's some stuff that, that I will throw in Florida, whether it's size wise or just styles of baits that like odds are I'm not going to throw in Gunnersville. I'm not going to throw on Smith. I'm not going to throw on Lanier. So I need to put that stuff in the boat for Florida and I don't want it all over the place mixing with a bunch of stuff. I want to be able to get back to Alabama and take that stuff out of the boat, but have it ready to go anytime I come to Florida. So that's what I use these bags for a lot. So this is like giant swim baits. I'll show you actually. Um, I got some Mondo like Ignite swim baits. Um, I got some classic, uh, big old flukes you know like magnum flukes uh there's some top waters in there and then i actually have another big old bag this is all um, gambler stuff so i love throwing a big easy down here uh, awesome top water bite actually these are boxer crawls for flipping mats and black and blue black blue uh tip you know that's perfect for kissimmee um, more black blue tip. I got a lot of stick baits actually. Uh, big easies. Actually, this is the easy swimmer. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I really like to throw down in Florida that I'm not always throwing on Gunnersville, but I want to have a decent amount of it because basically when it, when it gets good down here on it, it's good and you burn through a lot of soft plastics. That's just a reality. Last but not least, another bag. Um, this is a sneaky bag. This is line through swim baits, dark sleepers, and finesse hair jigs. This is some kind of naughty spotted bass and finesse oriented stuff. Um, little like hair jigs that almost look like marabou jigs for spotted bass. Um, really sneaky ones that my buddy makes. Uh, your, your classic um, line throughs. Uh, I think I have, what the hell's the one called? The mag draft. So it, just a lot lot of kind of random things but at the same time I have it identified so I know exactly what it is this I actually really like I keep all of my my dyes my markers um, my bait fuel so pink marker that's leader line eight pound test for spinning setups bait fuels in there um, backup power pole remote and a little wacky rig tool but everything kind of like that I would need to do something really quick maybe modifying a bait or tying up a new leader in a spinning rod uh, it's all right here ready to go all right more tackle so obviously 3,700 boxes. This this storage part of the Z20 is actually set up for it. So I got my jerk baits. I put them in this really nice box because jerk baits are expensive. That's just a reality. I got a bunch of 110s. I got stunners in there. Um, got them marked. Everything is identified. I probably should get a label maker, but you know it is what it is. This box is awesome. So this is Shaky Heads, Nico, Drop Shot, Wacky Rig. Everything I need to do any kind of fast fishing. The biggest thing with this is these nicer boxes, higher end boxes keep stuff separate, and especially when it comes to those little like circle hooks and stuff like that. It is so annoying when they get fumbled into other compartments and that. So this actually keeps things exactly in the slot that they should be in, and I don't have to worry about them getting all mixed up, which drives me absolutely nuts. Can you say OCD? Yeah, OCD. All right, more boxes. Uh, football, ball heads, and then any kind of pre-made skirt that I make, I drop into here. So it's kind of like my offshore slash like rock fishing stuff. Uh, traps, got a ton of those. You guys have seen those in the video. That's kind of a separate category. Top waters, got a ton of those too. Easy to identify. 
This is probably the most messy box that I have. Scrounger heads, swim bait heads, and blades. I have a lot of like weird custom-y stuff in there. So like there's like a hog farmer, like chatterbait looking thing. I got the flying chicken or whatever the hell it's called. Catches absolute giants. You just don't get a lot of bites. Scrounger heads. Um, these are the spin tricks. I caught a bunch of fish over the summer in. Any kind of weird swim bait, like standard size swim bait rig, little spinner bait kind of odd thing. It goes in here. So I know that. I don't know. I might confuse somebody else, but what else we got here? Um, so this is more of my flipping jigs, like my cover oriented stuff. I have swim jigs in here, flipping jigs, um, even like a little buzz bait blade thing uh, for rigging up a swim bait. Basically anything that interacts with like cover and things along those lines, um, jig wise or rig wise. That's what I keep in there. And then we got more crankbait stuff. So mid-depth crankbaits, wiggle wart, um, you know, a variety of things. DT10s, DT6 actually, DT8s I think go in here. And then square bills or shallower crankbaits. So DT6s, um, little, you know, strike kings, like the, the OG, Atifo, frit sides. Just add any kind of square bill slash shallow running crankbait you can imagine. Bog. I need you to move, dude, because we got to get in here to wrap up this video. Can you can you move, please? Bog is Bog is in his element, dude. He's warm, comfortable, and sleeping. This compartment is a bit of a mess. I'll be the first to admit, but as you guys know, I do a lot of stuff. So I got cameras in here. I kind of keep everything um, that I need, like very initially and right off the bat. So chesty um i got some extra clothes in here um and then i keep a few things that i'm trying out so these guys right here these are the new zal dangerous um bass mafia baits that i was talking about i got those because i want to try those things out uh, these are working class zero uh, my buddy keith from headwaters gave these to me and i really want to put them to use when i go to headwaters uh my buddy tyler wilcott gave these to me um these are the coalition 13 baits they're kind of like they almost look like a little shiner you kind of get the impression it's things that I want like right at hand, toilet paper, um, life jackets, some backup stuff to um, to run cameras. We got the Rappola scale, got something to clean the screens. This is actually a plug knocker, um, just in case I, I hook a bull shed, which I did the other day on a brush pile and I need to go and bonk it off because I'm not gonna lose 50 bucks. Uh, more random lures, some line ties. And then this right here is basically um, all my fishing licenses, uh, a little like rig to do a live stream if I need to put up the iPhone and then a new chesty and stuff like that. I really try to like pack it in. So I'm prepared to do just about everything. When it comes down to it, if I get into a pinch, say I'm at Lanier or on the road traveling and I'm like, dude, I need this. I'll just order it and have it two days from Tackle Warehouse. Tackle Warehouse is really good about shipping stuff and they always have stuff in and, and I like them. You know, they've been around for years. So I'll I'll just order stuff. So I try to be well prepared and, and packed right so I can almost address any situation. But at the same time, we live in a reality where basically you can order anything on demand. So if there's something really niche or really custom or something like that, I can probably get it online and get it to me within a couple days to fish. I hope you guys enjoy that. I, I'm really proud of the way I have my boat organized. I literally spent when I got it I spent like a day and a half getting it organized just with you know how I wanted it laid out and that and then before I actually came to Florida I redid things again maybe just made some tweaks and that but you really need to tweak stuff to make it work for your brain this is kind of the way my brain organizes and it makes it a lot easier to be sort of flowing and, and try different things and find things or be triggered sometimes you know it's about like looking at something and you're like dude i have one of those let me try that you know like you're offshore and i see my, my big bag of like full body swim baits and you, you just caught a four pounder on on a crankbait and they seem to be on the bottom you're like dude let me take a big swim bait and put a big lead weight in it and drop it down there so like having things in front of you in a manner that you understand understand what's there and, and what's what's available really helps you to fish better because you know what you got and and you already know how to use it so it's just a matter of like triggering it in your brain and having yourself organized really helps you to do that so dog is sleeping that means we got to catch some fish and uh get him a little excited i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm gonna pack my boat back up hit that like and subscribe button if you guys got any questions or recommendations which i'm always open to because i like being organized i am a little ocd uh drop it down in the comments box i'd really appreciate it we will see you back out on the water talking fishing or maybe i'll reorganize my boat again you know but later tie lines guys